Welcome to The Weaver Sews. I'm Daryl Lancaster. I learned a long time ago to finish edges of some of my garments by using a bias strip to create a visual statement. I've used this technique on jackets and on many, many vests. You can see the perimeter edges of these three jackets are all trimmed in a tidy way with a long bias strip mitering in the corners. This jacket is trimmed in linen. And this one from Commercial Fabric is trimmed with a wool blend suiting leftover. This jacket is from my 1800 zippered jacket pattern. And so is this one, hand woven from skeins of Noro knitting yarn used in the weft and cut crosswise. It is also trimmed in linen. And here we have a series of vests from the archives, all using commercial patterns and my hand woven fabric. This vintage hand woven mohair vest is trimmed with bias cut upholstery velvet. This is the vest from the first article I ever wrote for Handwoven Magazine, December of 2000. The article was titled Slice and Dice, featuring a piecing technique which I promise I will eventually cover in a video. But the trim around the perimeter uses the same technique. And this trim is wool crepe. This little vest from a handwoven scrap from another project is trimmed around the perimeter edge and the armholes with bias cut gold lame. Notice the sharp angles at the bottom of the center front. This technique works on all angles and shapes. You can see here in this handwoven mohair cape the sharp angles of the perimeter bias trim. I no longer have this piece in my collection, but you can see clearly the technique in use. Because the trim looks the same on both faces of the garment, it is a great finish for a reversible fabric. This jacket was sold long ago, but the technique allowed it to be reversible and it easily trimmed the rounded collar. This little vest, made from my 800 zippered vest pattern without the zipper, is also reversible. This vintage jacket from a Berta pattern uses the pieces I salvaged from an old production coat that I wove, and I used the lining fabric as the bias trim. It is actually a silk sari. And one final piece, this duster, with yokes hand woven in an inlay technique, uses the same binding technique for the center front, around the collar, and the armholes. And now that I've shown you what a fabulous technique this is, let me show you how to do it. I'll use the two 800 zippered vests that I've been working on to demonstrate various stages of the construction. If you're making a garment with a lining, you'll need to machine baste the edges together all the way around, including the armholes. Place the basting as close to the cut edge of the fabrics as possible. I've gone ahead and basted all the edges together with the lining in both of these vests. Remember, there is no seam allowance here. My 800 zippered vest pattern does not have seam allowance on the center front, neck, armhole, and lower edges. If you use your own commercial pattern, remove the seam allowances before you start so that you are binding to the original seam line. You'll need a long strip of two and a quarter inch or 5.7 centimeter wide bias to go all the way around the perimeter. I did a video on cutting and piecing bias. So if you don't know how to cut bias, check out that video. The link is in the show notes below. Measure roughly the length around the garment perimeter and add about three inches or 7.5 centimeters for each corner and about eight inches or 20 centimeters for the overlap. I roughly pin the binding to the perimeter to check if I have enough 
uh, but more importantly, to check that any bias joins don't occur right in the corners. The bias is applied much like you would the beginning of a Hong Kong seam finish. So if you're experienced at that, this is just a variation. The important thing here is to be aware of which face to apply the binding to. And here I'll be stitching the binding to the lining side first. That seems counterintuitive, I know. In the case of my 800 zippered vest, where I've used the lining as the seam finish, I want the edge binding to appear exactly as the other areas. So starting on the lining side and then bringing the binding to the front makes sense. For a jacket like you see here, applying the bias to the front face of the fabric first would make the most sense. The binding is wrapped around to the wrong side and stitched by hand. I start at the lower center back. It is the most discreet area and a straight line, so there's room to work to create a flawless join. Starting somewhere uh, around the lower center back, pin the right side of the bias strip to the lining side of the vest with the cut edges even, leaving about a four inch or 10 centimeter tail. To start, use a pin that has almost no head. Insert the point of the pin, one half inch or 1.2 centimeters from the cut edge, pushing towards the body of the garment. Push the head of the pin so it is even with the stitching line that we will be using to apply the binding. Switch to regular pins and pin for about four inches or 10 centimeters and then begin stitching from that point forward. If you leave some space before starting to stitch, it's easier to make the join at the end. Except for the starting pins, I don't pin the bias as I go. I think it's important to let the machine ease it in as it needs, and you'll have to manipulate the miters at the corners anyway, so pinning ahead may not give the best results. I've gone ahead and stitched one half inch or 1.2 centimeters from the cut edge since that's the desired finished width of the bound edge. It will match the trim on the seam finish. I've mitered this corner. I'll show you how in a minute. Gone up the front, mitered the top of the center front collar, gone across the collar, mitered the other front collar corner and down the remaining front. I'll demonstrate how to miter the last corner. As you approach a mitered corner, stop stitching one half inch or 1.2 centimeters away from the lower edge. That distance is the same width you are using to stitch the bias strip onto the garment. So if you wanted three quarters of an inch or two centimeter trim, then stop stitching three quarters of an inch or two centimeters from the lower edge. I carefully mark the amount with a pin so I know when I need to stop. Don't forget to back stitch. Remove the fabric from the machine. Fold the binding so that it is now parallel with the lower edge. That creates a little surplus of fabric here, which will then be used to create the miter. The trick here is that this little fold is completely flush with the center front edge. Anchor it in place with pins. Starting from the center front of the lower edge of the garment, continue stitching along the lower edge 
applying the binding with a one half inch or 1.2 centimeter seam allowance. Don't forget to back stitch. Stop stitching about four inches or 10 centimeters from the headless pin at the center back where you began. Continue the rest of the way by pinning the binding securely so it's even with the cut edge of the lower back. Pin with the points of the pins away from the garment. Trust me on this, it works. Using another dressmaker pin, place the head of the pin where the binding butts up against the beginning so that it is flush with what would have been the stitching line. The two ends are now connected at the stitching line, but only temporarily with pins. Leave a four inch or 10 centimeter tail. For clarity, I will be referring to this tail as the beginning tail and this tail as the ending tail. To form the bias joint, take the ending tail and fold it away from the garment at a 45 degree angle, making sure the pin heads don't interfere. Lay the beginning tail over the folded ending tail, parallel to the lower edge. You should see a little piece of the ending tail sticking out on the bottom. Slip your finger under the two tails so you don't catch the binding that's attached to the garment and carefully pin the two tails together so that the pins are perpendicular to the 45 degree angle of the ending tail. Make a chalk mark where the two tails intersect at each long edge of the binding. Draw a chalk line connecting the two marks. This line should be replicating the 45 degree angle of the ending tail. Remove all the pins except the ones that hold the two tails together This allows room to get in there with the machine and joined the two bias strips on the chalk line. See that the two tails are at right angles to each other and then carefully stitch along the chalk line. Trim the excess tails, leaving a quarter inch or six millimeter seam allowance and press open. Pin the now joined strip to the lower edge of the garment, finishing off the binding. Stitch carefully to attach and give the binding a good pressing away from the garment. The binding now can be brought around to the front, just as we did in the previous video that showed how to turn the binding under and use a decorative or regular machine stitch to attach through all layers. The armhole is treated in the same manner. Don't start the join at the underarm. It's too tight of a curve. Instead, start in the middle of the back of the armhole as it is as straight a line as you can get in an armhole and you'll have a little bit more room to work. I'll show you what to do with the miters, but first let me explain the advantage of applying the bias starting from the lining side of the garment. When the binding is stitched to the lining side of the garment first and then brought around to the front, 
there isn't a choice about which direction the miter faces on the lining side. Here, you can see the small opening in the miter enters from the right. On the opposite face of the fabric, in this case, the lining side, you can choose which edge to fold down first, which controls the direction of the miter. And you may be saying, why does this matter? If you look at the lower edge of this vest, and you are kind of one of those people who are a stickler for details, like me, you might want the miters mirroring each other. I know. There are some of you probably rolling your eyes thinking, this is a thing. But in case you care, make sure that you turn up the same edge first on the left and right half of the garment so the miter directions mirror each other. Fold under the binding seam allowance and then fold the binding towards the garment. Anchor one long edge of the binding with pins as you did for the bound seams in a previous video. On the other edge, repeat this step, carefully manipulating the miter so it is exactly at a 45 degree angle. Pin carefully with the point of the pin going into the inside corner of the miter to anchor it. When you're stitching the binding down with whatever decorative stitch you choose, pivot at the miter intersection. Pivot the fabric with the needle in it and continue in the new direction. Though I covered this in previous videos, I'll show you some examples of stitching options with this sampler. Try a shallow zigzag, a hem stitch, or an applique stitch, or if your machine only does straight stitching, use that. In the white hand-woven, hand-spun vest, after having a couple of my students insist on a side vent at the lower edge of the side seams, I kept the lower four inches or 10 centimeters open when stitching up the binding for the side seams. So what to do with the perimeter binding in a situation like this? Start at the edge of the vent by turning under about an inch of the bias strip, wrapping two in this case, the front face of the garment. This will encase the lower part of the vent so it will be nice and tidy. End the bias strip in the same manner. When the binding is turned to the front face of the garment and stitched down, the sides will be neat and tidy. I've already finished off the center back section of this vest, and you can see that I've done the finishing stitch here on the front face. If you want to close up this little opening, all you need to do is take your ending tails of thread or beginning tails of thread, depending on which end you're on, thread through a needle, and use it to close this with hand stitching. If you wish to insert a zipper, like I have on this vest, do it with the binding still free before you wrap it around and attach to the front. Next time, I'll show you how. I'm Daryl Lancaster for The Weaver Sews.